Hi, hola, bonjour, assalamu alaikum. You must wonder why I use so many forms of reading. Can you guess our topic for this session? Indeed, it is diversity. So, pen and paper time please. Pause this video and write down all the words that come to your mind when you hear the word diversity. Come on, do it. Yeah, anything that comes to your mind related to diversity. Welcome back. I expect words like you know, region, religion, ethnicity, socioeconomic background, various things related to people. Am I right? Well, diversity really means variety. It means an assortment of various students in your classroom. It's not just limited to the words I mentioned just now, but encompasses many other aspects as well. Well, do you have a student in your class who's absent a lot more often than the others and also a student who's never absent? Do you have both boys and girls in your classroom? Do you have a very bright student in your class who tries to answer all the questions asked and also a student who doesn't answer a single question? Do you have a student who's excellent in maths but doesn't fare too well in English? Do you have students who are from different religions and countries and they still are together? Well, if the answer to all or any of the questions is a yes, then you too have a diverse class. And if we have a diverse class, we have to make sure that we as teachers respect, understand and teach every student without any bias, without any perception and preconceived notions. Let me share an interesting research finding with you. In a research conducted by Rosenthal and Jacobson in 1968 with school teachers, it was found that students perform better and achieve high results when their teacher have high expectations of them. In contrast, they did not perform up to their potential when the teacher did not have high expectations. Let's see if we can identify some of the biases and how we express our expectations with our students. When we have high expectations of a student, we tend to give them more time to answer questions. We say things like, go on, I'm waiting, take your time. We provide them with cues to get their responses right. We give them specific feedback on their areas of improvement. You know, you can do it. Just work on adding examples to support your argument. We create opportunity for them to learn new things. Why don't we go to the museum this weekend and learn a few things about our history? And we encourage them with positive reinforcement. If you make this project this weekend, you will get 10 points extra. However, if we have low expectations of a student, we generally leave no stone unturned to demotivate them. Well, I know, mostly unconsciously, but it happens. Yes, it does. We avoid giving them extra time to think. I don't have all the time in the world. We move on to the other students for answers if the student takes time to think. Ahmed, why don't you just answer the question? We offer little or no feedback and give them less opportunity than the favorite students. Not only this, we even give negative reinforcement or little positive reinforcement. I'd write a letter to your parents telling them that you cannot study. Our expectations as teachers are directly proportional to diversity. We may get biased towards certain personalities, genders, socioeconomic backgrounds, learning styles. But once we understand diversity and how we can alter our perception and our teaching style, every single student has the potential to grow, develop and flourish just the way we want them to. Food for thought, isn't it?